Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the wonderful world of Wasteland. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, and we were lucky enough for Deep Silver to sponsor this video, as well as give us access to the full game early, and I've been playing this game extensively over the last week, about 30 hours, and I have a lot of thoughts to discuss, so let's not beat around the bush and get straight into it. If you are unaware, Wasteland came out in 1988, and it was created by Interplay. Yep, the same guys who made the first Fallout game. Now, while Fallout took a lot of inspiration from Wasteland, they are not the same universe canonically. However, there are lots of similar themes and vibes. Fast forward to 2014 and you may know that by now Bethesda has bought the rights to Fallout and continued the franchise in their own direction. However, Brian Fargo and In Exile Entertainment made Wasteland 2, which continued the Wasteland series which began in 1988. Now we're here at 2020 with Wasteland 3 and personally, I think it could not have come at a better time since the Fallout franchise has let's just say changed. If you were a fan of Fallout 1 and 2, the old turn-based Fallout games, then you will without a doubt enjoy this squad-based RPG. I'd actually say even if you enjoyed New Vegas for the world building and characters, then you'll probably like this. But let's explore this game a little bit more in depth and break down all of its parts. Ultimately, Wasteland 3 is a squad-based RPG set in the frozen wastelands of Colorado. You are an Arizona Ranger, members of Team November and you've been sent to Colorado Springs to make a deal with a man called the Patriarch who runs Colorado. The idea was that once you establish contact, the Arizona Rangers will have access to certain resources they need from the Patriarch, and the Patriarch will have access to military support. But as per the opening, the trek to Colorado goes awry, and only your two player characters survive. And yes, I said too, remember this is a squad-based RPG. You will be leveling multiple characters, and there is lots of of fun and freedom to be had here. I'll go into that more in a minute. But as is the case with RPGs, in my opinion, you can have all the great mechanics you want, but if the world, the story, the choices, the characters, and the factions don't stack up, then there's not much point in playing. Well, good news. Wasteland 3 is great in that regard. Fantastic even. While the main premise sounds rather straightforward, the factions, characters, missions, and various plot lines you get exposed to just make this such a great experience from a world building questing perspective. It's a world stuck in the 80s, 90s kind of time as the global thermonuclear war occurs in 1998, meaning many of the leftover old world artifacts are culturally from that era. There are multiple gangs and tribes with all interconnected histories and interactions which really makes the world feel real and tangible. And it doesn't suffer from the tribals over here and civilization over there kind of thing either. You see them interact or hear of them interacting a lot. For example, there's this group called the Gippers which run an oil refinery and they basically have a monopoly on Colorado oil. So people have to interact and trade with them. However, the Gippers also worship a Ronald Reagan AI as a god. He even has an enormous statue built out the front which doubles as a laser cannon. All of his wives, kinda like nuns married to God, are called Nancy, named after Nancy Reagan, his first wife. It's a crazy cool little cult, but like Fallout has done in the past, they just make these crazy cults and factions fit into the world seamlessly so you just don't question it, which is really just good world building. There are marshals of the Colorado Springs, there are the hundred families which are descendants of the Bunker families, they're like an upper class. There's refugees from the Eastern Plains having to flee the Rising Plains gangs. Among them are the Payasos, the type who relish in comedy and cruel jokes, dressed as clowns as they cleave you in half or feed you a human flesh burger. Or rather, there are the Godfishers who make sacrifice of slaves and captures, turning their skin and bones into kites to send them to the heavens so that they may receive rains from God. And then there are the Scar Collectors, a group obsessed with cybernetic modifications. In fact, one of the coolest moments for me is when I met their ex-leader and he could actually become a companion. I'll touch on the great companions soon too, but I think I need to explain some of the actual mechanics first. You will start the game with your own two ranger characters who came from Arizona and you are the last confirmed surviving members of Team November. The degree of customizability is really what makes this game fun for me. Of course, you can manipulate their appearance and aesthetic as much as you like, but the stats 
is where it gets good for me. In Wasteland 3, each character has multiple attributes and multiple skills to choose from. You can also pick a background, which offers some statistical bonus, and also a quirk, which is like a trait from New Vegas for sake of comparison. For example, I picked for my healer leadership character this interesting quirk, and it gave me a 100% resistance to pretty much every status effect. However, I gained experience 15% slower. I mitigated this with some items and skill focuses, but it proved a fantastic choice for this character, because I could dash through poison clouds or fire as a medic without worrying about myself, instead only concerned with healing my team members. This particular character had a high focus on charisma and intelligence, and if you're familiar with any of my prior discussions on builds, some of my favorite characters are the smooth talker, utility, medic, scientist type characters, ones who forego combat skills for other benefits. Well, that is what's brilliant about the squad, as opposed to a singular character. So my first custom characters were Coyote, who was this giant melee character. He looked gnarly. He was all about taking hits and hitting back harder, but I gave him a sweet side too. He had the skill Animal Whisperer, and he could use this to give himself pet companions. And by the way, they can actually dish out a lot of damage. My other character, Hawk, was focused on leadership and first aid, but later she would rack up lots of skills, such as lockpicking, nerd stuff, and mechanics. I'd really recommend going into the game like this. Get yourself a utility character and a combat-oriented character. Now, after the tutorial, it's not long before you get into Ranger HQ, and here you can customize your squad further. You can recruit from a bunch of pre-made options or even customize your own new member. Characters like this can be very handy because they complement your team by filling in weaknesses. However, these are just like your custom characters in the way that they don't have these written personalities. So personally, I would not recommend you go get a full team of six of these guys because if you value story and characters, the companions, in my opinion, are too good to pass up. And especially early on, they are easy enough to customize in a direction that you want them. Marshall Kwan, who is basically one of the first companions you get access to, was really enjoyable throughout the game, and to be honest, so was Lucia Wesson, and Ironclad Cordite is just awesome. There is also a drunk shotgunner hobo called Scotchmo who had some of that meme appeal, but I dumped him for better characters along the way. In terms of actually talking about skills, I really have to commend In Exile for making them all very useful. You are just bombarded with opportunities to make use of your various skills, and there is almost always multiple ways of going about missions. When roaming in your Kodiak, the survival skill was just fantastic, allowing you to evade enemy encounters. Even Animal Whisperer, which may at first just seem like animal companions, also allows you to tame beasts mid-combat, turning them against their allies, which can be vitally useful in certain scenarios. There is a vast catalogue of weapons and armour as well, which can give you stat bonuses and various cool abilities. And that's another thing to consider for your squad. You do not want a whole squad of single weapon type users, so say assault rifle users, or you'll absolutely churn through all of your ammo. A variety of weapon types is a very wise choice to diversify your ammo usage and also your strategies. And just a tip, do not forego explosives. It's so fun and very useful, allowing you to capitalize on opportunities when the enemies are grouped up. Now, I would like to throw out a little disclaimer for people. Obviously, this is a turn-based RPG, so it's quite tactical and there are a lot of options. At first, I was honestly quite overwhelmed between customization, actual gameplay, and even just the world. If you were feeling like that at first, I did too, but I can promise you, persevere and you will love it. Once you start getting the hang of combat, once you start wrapping your mind around the new factions and characters, once you start feeling comfortable, the game just unfolds beautifully. If you're very familiar with turn-based RPGs such as Divinity Original Sin, then maybe it might not be as much of an adjustment for you, but for me, even having played Divinity Original Sin 2, I didn't feel quite comfortable with it. There's a lot to learn. So for the first four-ish, five-ish hours, I was a little bit in the dark, but afterwards it felt supernatural, and honestly, Turn-based combat can be surprisingly epic sometimes, especially when you finesse this awesome synergistic strategy that just pays off. It's an awesome feeling, and I can just throw out there that the music in this game that comes on during certain fundamental fights is just perfect. Yeah!
To wrap this up, what are all my final thoughts on The Wasteland 3? Do I rate it? Well, yes, I think Wasteland 3 is a really fantastic game for someone who is craving a post-apocalyptic world, someone who wants that feeling of classic Fallout games and even Fallout New Vegas in regards to world building and character and story. Beyond that, from the RPG angle, it's great. There are so many options and so many strategies and teams that you can create. Throughout my playthrough, I would constantly be thinking of different builds and how I'd make this choice differently or that choice differently. I imagine the replayability is going to be huge and the choices are really quite tricky sometimes. The feeling of choice and consequence feels heavy and it's not like there's just this black and white answer to everything. The nuance to decisions is compelling. To be honest, the only resistance I can think of is this is a game that requires investment and thinking. You have to learn a lot. You have to put in the work to understand all of its mechanics and persevere to understand this world that you You've been thrown into. So if you aren't willing to invest a lot of time into the game, I don't know if it will be for you. However, if you are desperate for a post-apocalyptic RPG with a wide range of gameplay options, choices and consequences, and also a world with compelling story, characters and factions, then I most definitely recommend playing Wasteland 3. Thanks so much for watching ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Give the video a like for the Arizona Rangers. Let me know if you're getting Wasteland 3 or if you've played it. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.